Hello, AP Calculus students. The video today is about uh, finding antiderivatives, ways to find area under the curve um, by taking the antiderivative. So um, usually capital F of X is what we refer to as the antiderivative of a function. So it's kind of like taking the reverse of a derivative. It's going in the other direction. Instead of taking the derivative, you're finding the integral or the integral function. So if you are given a function, say it's x to the n, the way you would find the antiderivative is basically the power rule that we used for derivatives, but in reverse. Instead of taking away one from the power, we add one. And then to compensate for that fact and make sure we match the coefficient, we divide by n plus 1. So I'm going to do a few examples to show you what it looks like. So if you're given little f of x equals x squared plus 7x plus 2, to take the antiderivative, well, we're going to first remember when you, you can treat each term separately because of the sum rule that we talked about with our, our properties. So x to the power of 2, that would be like this, x to the n. So n is 2. So the antiderivative of x squared would be x to the 2 plus 1, which would be 3, over n plus 1, which would be 3. So first, we treat this x cubed over 3. Okay, then we'll deal with the 7x. So um, 7x is 7x to the power of 1. The 7 stays because of that constant multiple rule we talked about earlier. Um, we add 1, so x squared, and then we have to, again, divide by that new exponent. Okay, so our, our power should match what we're dividing by when we take the antiderivative, same here. Um, with 2, we know that the antiderivative of 2 has to be 2x, right? Because 2 by itself is sort of like 2x to the 0, right? So if we add 1 to that um, 0, we get uh, 1. And then we would divide by 1, but we don't really need to show that, right? Just like we don't need to show x to the 0. Um, but that's technically a division by 1 right there. And then we always have to add, we're not going to talk about this very much yet, but we have to add some constant c. Because Remember when you take the derivative of a constant, that derivative is zero. So it very well might be that um, c is zero in this case, but we don't know what it is. So we always have to add some constant c to account for the fact that this could be one, two, three, a hundred, a million, negative thousand, um, because if you take the derivative of the constant, we'll get back to zero. Okay, just to add this as a placeholder. Okay. We're going to go do another example. So little f of x equals square root of x plus 2 over root x. Um, I'm going to rewrite this with exponents because remember, it's easiest to deal with this rule when you have things as powers. So I'm going to keep going with little f of x here. And I'm just going to rewrite it as x to the 1 half plus 2 times x to the negative 1 half. OK, because that's going to make it easier to apply the power rule. And I'm going to use this rule now. So I'm going to, now I'm going to, this is working with big f of x. That's an x clearly, right? There we go. OK, um, so big f of x. So I'm going to add 1 to 1 half. So 1 plus 1 and a half, 1 plus a half is 3 halves. So this will be 3 over 2. And then I have to divide by 3 over 2. Okay. And then plus 2, because that's my constant multiple, times x to the power of what's negative 1 half plus 1. That's going to be positive 1 half. And I have to divide by positive 1 half. OK, um, so let's clean this up a little bit. It looks a little bit uh, messy. So just to be sort of uh, satisfied with it, we can have division by 3 halves just be 2 thirds times x to the 3 over 2 plus division by 1 half would be 2 times 2 square root of x. So I'm going to leave very much space here. So f of x could be written as 2 thirds square root of x to the third plus 4 square root of x plus c. Okay. We always have to think about that c. 
Okay, we'll do another one. So here we've got um, number three, f of x equals uh, cube root of x plus one over x to the third. So just like before, I wanna rewrite this with exponents instead of radicals. So this is still little f of x. I haven't, I'm not taking the antiderivative yet. I'm just rewriting it in a way that is more palatable to me. So x to the one third plus x to the negative three. Okay, so now this is a little easier to work with. It's a little easier to use this power rule. Okay, let me zoom out just a wee bit. Okay, all right. So um, now we're gonna take the antiderivative. So big F of X is gonna be equal to one third plus one would be four thirds. And then I divide this by four thirds plus Negative three plus one is negative two. Just remember that if you're adding one to three, you get negative two, and then we divide by negative two. Okay, and then just to clean up a little bit, we have big F of X is gonna equal three fourths X to the four thirds. Um, I guess we could just say minus one over uh, two times X squared and then plus C. And that's our full antiderivative. Okay, um, so now with um, trig, uh, these are a couple of good trig integrals to know. So um, the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine of X plus C. And you can think about the way that we take the derivative of cosine as being negative sine. It, it, that's usually the way that makes the most sense to people. We know the derivative of positive cosine is negative sine. So the, it stands to reason that the um, antiderivative of positive sine would be negative cosine. And then um, here, the antiderivative of cosine would just be sine of X plus C. And that just comes from sort of doing our derivative in reverse. Okay. Okay, so the last couple of examples that I want to do here are actually finding, really calculating an area under the curve. And that's using this second part of the fundamental theorem, theorem of calculus. The area under the curve from A to B of f of x dx is equal to the value of the antiderivative at B minus the value of the antiderivative at A. Right, because the antiderivative is the area of function. So if we take it at B and then subtract A, the difference between that is going to leave you with this area. Okay, so we're going to actually calculate some numbers now. We're, we're moving past finding the functions and we're going to um, use the skills that we have now to actually find um, the area under the curve. And what's more is I'm going to show you how to check it in your calculator um, in your TI-84. All right, so area under the curve from one to five of x squared dx. So let's find the antiderivative. So if we say that little f of x is equal to x squared, we know that by the power rule, the antiderivative of x squared is x to the third over three, okay? So because we're looking at the area from one to five, we can say, okay, well, if I substitute five into this antiderivative, and then subtract substitution of one into the antiderivative, that will leave me with this area under the curve. So let's go ahead and try that. So five cubed over three minus one cubed over three will give us our area under the curve. So we've got five cubed, right? That's a hundred, five times five times five is 125. One cubed is one. So 124 over three is going to be our area under the curve, okay? And we can actually test, we can, tr we can actually um, determine that in our graphing calculator. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you how in the next one because I don't wanna make this video too long. Okay, so um, here we have a trig problem. So find the area under the curve from zero to pi over two of three sine of x dx. So if we let f of x be three times sine of x. We can say, well, the antiderivative, oh, I didn't explain. We add C, right? We, I didn't actually do that in the last problem. We add C 
but when we are subtracting, the Cs would cancel out. So that's why I didn't make a big deal about that C with the antiderivative. Maybe I can show you how it would work at this point with, with this problem. So antiderivative, remember that three is that constant multiple. So it would be three times uh, negative cosine of X plus B. So we can actually write that as negative three cosine of X plus C. So I'll go ahead and plug in the C just to kind of show you what happens and why I didn't make a big deal about this when we were actually calculating um, an, a, num a numerical area. Okay, so we will do F of big F of pi over two minus big F of zero. So negative three cosine of pi over two plus C minus negative three cosine of zero plus C. So do you see how the C's are gonna cancel out? So that's why we don't even really deal with them here because when you subtract, they, you're going to end up getting the same number no matter what C is. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and evaluate this now. So cosine of pi over two is zero, negative three times zero is zero. So this whole expression is gonna simplify to zero minus um, negative three. So cosine of zero is positive one positive one times negative three is negative three. So this is gonna be zero minus negative three, which is zero plus three or three. So the area under the curve from zero to two pi of three sine of x dx is three. And I'm gonna show you how to uh, check that in your calculator too, or even find the antiderivative or find the area under the curve in your calculator as well, um, just because it comes in handy. So I to turn the calculator on. I just go to y equals and I put um, three sine of x in. You wanna also make sure in AP Calculus that you're in radian mode, which I am, so that's good. Okay, so three sine of x. All right, so now I'm gonna quit out of the y equals and I'm going to go to math and then I'm gonna go down until I see, um, for me it's option nine, the integral, function integral. So I'm gonna press enter and I'm going to just kind of type in what is on my paper basically. So the area under the curve from x equals zero to x equals pi over two of, now the function I already stored in my y equals. So I'm gonna to go to vars, which stands for variables, y vars function y1, and then right arrow over to dx. And then I'm gonna press enter and you can see that it gives me three, which checks out with that. So this is just a tool you can always use to double check your work or if it's a function that, you know, it's hard to take the antiderivative and it's a calculator friendly problem, then you can use that, okay? Um, all right, I hope this video helped. Good luck. As always, thank you for watching and please email me with any questions you have. Have a wonderful day.